three-part series, we will review hyper and hypovascular masses of the liver. Part one will cover hypervascular masses of the liver. I'm Joseph Owen. Thank you for joining. At the end of these screencasts, you should be able to distinguish the common hypervascular and hypovascular masses of the liver based on key imaging features. You should be able to compare and contrast the common benign and malignant masses we see within the liver. And you should start to recognize some exceptions or atypical presentations of nodules or masses, particularly with eovist or primovis contrast. When I look at hypervascular masses and divide them into benign and malignant categories, under the benign heading, I think of focal nodular hyperplasia, rapidly filling hemangiomas, which are often small, less than one or two centimeters, and hepatic adenomas. Under the malignant category, I think of hepatocellular carcinoma when I'm dealing with a patient with cirrhosis or risk factors for cirrhosis. Or I'm thinking of classic hypervascular metastasis within the liver like renal cell carcinoma, thyroid cancer, or neuroendocrine tumor. Let's take a look at some of these hypervascular masses. I cannot emphasize enough that a late arterial phase is essential for oncologic imaging. And what is a late arterial phase? It's where there is opacification of the hepatic artery and at least partial opacification of the portal vein without hepatic vein opacification. Getting a late arterial phase ensures that the contrast has reached the capillary beds and that hypervascular masses, which are predominantly supplied by arterial blood, will hyperenhance relative to the background liver. If you have an early arterial phase, you may miss the arterial phase hyperenhancement. Now, focal nodular hyperplasia is gonna show arterial phase hyperenhancement, with maybe some hypoenhancement if there's a central scar. Hypervascular metastasis are gonna be very similar, showing arterial phase hyperenhancement. Sometimes it's central hyperenhancement. Hepatocellular carcinoma, again, is predominantly going to be seen in patients with cirrhosis or risk factors for cirrhosis. And it should show arterial phase hyperenhancement that is non-REM. If there is REM arterial phase hyperenhancement, that is going to fall into a hypovascular masses category. When we look at the portal venous phase, focal nodular hyperplasia is going to start to slowly equilibrate with the background liver. So what does that mean? It means that as the liver starts to enhance, the focal nodular hyperplasia will have less hyperenhancement relative to the liver, eventually having a very similar enhancement intensity to the liver. Hypervascular metastasis, on the other hand, tend to wash out, and they wash out early, which is particularly evident on contrast-enhanced ultrasound. Hepatocellular carcinoma will often show washout, but that washout can be later than the washout we see with hypervascular metastasis. Sometimes you will not see washout on portal venous phase, and it may be on the two to five minute delay when washout first becomes evident. When you get to the two to five minute delay, depending on your protocol design, you should see that focal nodular hyperplasia equilibrating with the background liver. We can still somewhat distinguish the mass, but the enhancement intensity is similar to the background liver. And that's because the focal nodular hyperplasia is made up of disorganized hepatocytes. So it'll have a similar enhancement pattern, but it shows arterial phase hyperenhancement in that early sequence, the late arterial phase, because it is recruiting predominantly an arterial blood supply where the liver has predominantly a portal venous blood supply. Hypervascular metastasis, again, are going to show washout, so they will be hypointense to the background liver, typically on your two to five minute delay. Hepatocellular carcinoma is classic imaging features in combination with that non-REM arterial phase hyperenhancement include washout, 
so signal intensity less than the background liver, and a capsule appearance. Note I have capsule in quotation marks because this is not a capsule on pathology, but it is an, the imaging appearance of a capsule, previously referred to as pseudocapsule. If you are using eovist or primavist and you can obtain a hepatobiliary phase, that is often obtained with a 20-minute delay from the contrast injection. Focal nodular hyperplasia should take up eovist and enhance with similar signal intensity to the background liver. You may see some areas that are not taking up eovist that correspond to the central scar and sometimes that can create a stellator spoke wheel appearance. I don't have images of the lesions we've been looking at for hypervascular and metastasis and hepatocellular carcinoma, but almost always hypervascular metastasis will be hypo-intense on hepatobiliary phase. And that's really true for almost all metastatic nodules and masses. Hepatocellular carcinoma is also hypo-intense on hepatobiliary phase in most cases, it is well described that well differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma can retain EOVIST. And we'll look at some of these issues with EOVIST in the third podcast. When we look at our T1 weighted imaging, focal nodular hyperplasia is going to be near ISO intense or just minimally hyper intense. So you can see here the focal nodular hyperplasia is minimally hyperintense relative to the background liver, and it's maybe the central scar has a little hyperintensity. In this case, it's near ISO intense to the liver. Hypervascular metastasis can be highly variable. In general, they are mildly to moderately hyperintense to the background liver. Hepatocellular carcinoma tends to be mildly hyperintense to the liver. When we look at T1-weighted imaging, the focal nodular hyperplasia should be near iso-intense. It may be mildly hyper-intense if there is a background of hepatic steatosis, but in a normal liver, it should be near iso-intense, earning its name as, or nickname as a stealth lesion. Hypervascular metastasis, and really, any malignant lesion within the liver besides melanoma is almost always going to be hypo-intense on T1-weighted imaging. So if you see an abnormality on your contrast-enhanced imaging, and you're not sure if it's perfusional or shunt or something abnormal, or you, you think it might be a real MET, if you go back and you can see it hypo-intense on your T1-weighted imaging, you can be sure that there is some underlying abnormality to the liver parenchyma. Hepatocellular carcinoma, also tends to be T1 hypo-intense, although some hepatocellular carcinomas will show focal fat. So on in-phased imaging, you may see a small, mildly hyper-intense nodule that shows signal loss on your opposed phased imaging. And that intracellular fat is an ancillary feature for hepatocellular carcinoma. Now let's look at some slightly more complicated cases. Here we have T2 weighted imaging, T2 fat saturated imaging, and T1 pre-contrast spoiled gradient recalled echo fat saturated imaging. On the T2 weighted image, we see mild T2 hyperintensity with little focal areas of moderate hyperintensity. And that mild hyperintensity relative to the background liver is accentuated with our fat saturated imaging. On our T1 weighted pre-contrast imaging, we can see focal areas of hyperintensity likely corresponding to hemorrhage, but overall the mass is hypo-intense relative to the liver. When we look at post-contrast imaging, again, it's hypo-intense on our pre-contrast imaging. We see this heterogeneous non-rim enhancement on our late arterial phase. And then by our two to five minute delay, we can see that the mass is hypo-intense to liver centrally with a capsule appearance.
Diffusion restricted imaging can be variable. Here we see a few focal areas of diffusion restriction within the mass. I will tell you that in general, I do not use diffusion restriction to classify something as benign or malignant. I'm often using diffusion restriction to improve my sensitivity for abnormalities within the liver, particularly small abnormalities less than 10 millimeters. So again, T1 hypointense, mildly T2 hyperintense, focal areas of hemorrhage, non-rim arterial phase hyperenhancement, washout, and capsule appearance. This is an HCC. Now let's take a look at another mass in the liver. Carefully examine this liver and see if you can determine or detect where the abnormality is. In this case, there is on T2 weighted imaging, a mass in the right hemi liver, which is near ISO intense to the background liver. If it wasn't for the disorganization and lack of normal vessel branching pattern within this mass, you might be hard pressed to detect it on T2 or T1 weighted imaging. When we go to our contrast enhanced phase, again, it's ISO intense on our pre-contrast imaging. It shows arterial phase hyper enhancement relative to background liver. And then we can see on our two to five minute delay that equilibration with background liver. So it's now ISO intense to the background liver or equilibrated with the background liver. And on our 20 minute hepatobiliary phase with eovist slash primovist, we can see that the mass takes up eovist except for that central area of scarring and some of those spokes coming off that spoke wheel creating that stellate appearance. On diffusion weighted imaging, the focal nodular hyperplasia shows mild signal intensity, higher than background liver, but it's near stealth. I will say that focal nodular hyperplasia can have a variable diffusion weighted imaging appearance. And this again is a focal nodular hyperplasia. T1 iso intense, T2 iso intense, arterial phase hyper enhancement that equilibrates with contrast with the background liver and retains eovist. In summary, Focal nodular hyperplasia, T1 iso intense, T2 iso intense. Arterial phase hyperenhancement equilibrates with background liver on subsequent phases of contrast and takes up eovist. Hypervascular metastasis are T1 hypo intense. They show variable hyperintensity on T2. They have arterial phase hyperenhancement with early washout. Hepatocellular carcinoma can appear very similar to hypervascular metastasis. But remember, it is occurring most frequently in a cirrhotic liver or patients with risk factors for cirrhosis. It's hypointense on T1, mildly hyperintense on T2, with arterial phase hyperenhancement, washout, and capsule appearance. Thank you for your attention, and I hope you enjoy part two and three of this screencast series on hyper and hypovascular masses of the liver.